Okay, guys. Now, I started writing poetry in 1966. I went to... Who are you? Harry Northam. Oh, gee, I knew you look familiar. Um, 71 years old. I was born in Amarillo, Texas, and by the time I was 17, I lived in 17 different places. I'm the youngest Can you say was there I mean, an economic is, struggle that made you move around? I get up, I get down. I get up, I get into the shower, I get my, put my feet in my shoes and I hit the trail, but I get up and I get down. But the purpose of poetry is praise and affirmation of life. The purpose of poetry is to get an asset out of the decent. And let me just continue about St. Mark's Church on the Bowery. I read a poem in the open reading in 1966 and Paul Blackburn, who had a book called The Cities out of Rome Press, came up to me to praise my poetry and he said to me, don't go on for sound, make your point, don't mark time, cut back and wait till the action starts again. And that's what I do. So I'm going to read you a short poem. What I do is I, I write poems in my notebooks and then I go home. And, write them down or type them out and this is a poem I wrote recently and uh, it's I wrote it on September 10th 19 2011 dream is dark and half of nothing speech a hangman in shadow values deny gliders for simple lack of listening to wait for voice that relates second job to waiting downstairs while a woman calls out do you like spiders no. Well, I like them, but not if one is in my bed. Well, look above the door. There's a big, beautiful web that goes to the top of the building. Oh, yes, I see it. It's beautiful. Do you want to hear a poem about crickets? Crickets, 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 crickets. He said to his son, who was holding his baby, the man and woman drove home past the airport where 50,000 plane nuts visit every year. A road had a halo with an explosion above its end. Charity, a blazing arrow focused on sending signs, symbols, many images with narrative moving underneath while three poets ate crab cake Caesar salads near the Fox River. Quiet arc that meets an upcoming arc replenishes all glories in towns across a single road that expands a triangle. All planes expand air. That's my poem for the day, Mr. Don Sherman. All planes expand air. Yes. Would you amplify that? What do you mean? You don't have to amplify or explain it. You just follow the images. It's just an image. See, you, 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 you can't get an eternal. The whole plane to expand air. Yeah, well, it has to make room for the plane, right? It has to display space. I'm a displaced person. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. That's why we invited you on the show. We You're the a comic. We want people to be found on the show with being displaced. I bet if we, if we had a show based upon lost people, anybody who's lost, say this number, and we'll get hundreds of thousands of calls. Do you know who you are? Yeah, I know. I'm the only guy who knows who I am because I'm the only person not claiming to be Jesus Christ. Jeez, uh, I wouldn't want that job. <laughs> That's too big a job. you got to admit. Let's talk to and John. He had, and he, had no, he didn't have any assistance. Actually, Jesus, did, 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 did God come to, did Jesus go to God for advice, you think? He is God. I mean, he is God. God is God. There's only one God. It's all part of the same. He's the son of God. Well, he's divine and human. Well, that's not, <laughs> that's not definitely written in the books yet. Here's what I want to know. It takes a long time for something to be written. As let me, a, bring, as let me bring you back to something that's vitally important. Don't bring me back. Send me a poem. Ed. <laughs> you were the first white comic to ever play the Apollo in 1960 or 1960. Yeah, but I wasn't white then. I was black. I came out on stage and turned immediately turned completely black. 
<laughs> really? Yeah, it was a, a phenomenon. They didn't say how a guy can go from totally white to totally black. And as soon as I left the arena, I turned white again. So then they, they don't know who was there. They, they, they don't know there was a black there was a black man that turned white and then turned black again. And he left and then never came back. But he was very funny. No, I did. I, I, I had the distinct honor to work with uh, Dinah Washington. I, I met her in, in San Juan for Puerto Rico. It was very, very interesting. And uh, I should never allow my glasses to be on. It, it, it gives away your age. You're not the... And uh, I'm, I'm working my act in, the, in this hotel, and I hear a, a laughter. So distinctly. I said, is that Dinah Washington? And she said, yeah, honey, you're with me. You're going with me. Wherever I go, you go. I said, you know how many Alphonse drives? And you know how many little club, club houses we had in the cellars that were designed to look like little club workers? And you got nowhere with the girls until they heard Dinah Washington sing, as he loved me. And she took me with her to the uh, with public of mine and then took me on a tour of the children's circuit. In those days, they had a lot of black nightclubs and theaters. It was a quite an experience, but I, I couldn't keep up with her. She was a she was a great a great artist and a totally insane human being. Was she married to Rafael Campos at the time? I think she had just divorced Rafael. Was he? He wasn't the first husband. Was he? She had a lot of husbands. She had a lot of husbands and a lot of fur coats. And she gave my my wife a gift of a green rabbit coat. And my, 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 my wife made me when was pregnant at the time, and she used to call her Pregnola. She said, you know, you don't come you can't go out and go to cold like that. And she took out this big green rabbit coat and put it around this little girl. And she, she had it to this day. Then uh, her mom gave it over to her daughter, Amy. And uh, so Amy can tell all her friends that she has it. How'd you get into comedy in the first place? Comedy, comedy was, uh, I, I guess, uh, uh, really my reservoir for the creativity of my comedy came from having a tremendous speech block. But when you have a tremendous speech impediment, you can't say the word, but you can say the substitute word. And the substitute word usually came out funny, you know? So I, I, I was really not saying what I really meant to say, I was saying a humorous version of what I meant to say. I just re realized that fact right now, right, right in front of you, right here. It's called impromptu thinking. It's called loose brain. It's called brain unpressed, un, un, unaware of any expectation of it. You're not expecting an answer of this brain, you're not expecting a job of this brain, you're not expecting anything, uh, an advancement of your life in this brain. This, this brain is just executing to provoke laughter. Living in the present? Living in the present, very hard. Very hard. Because you're, you're always in the, if the present is preparation for the future, then forget about the present, look at the future. I remember one time I did a picture for a Scorsese called Alice Doesn't Live Anymore, and I played Jim and Joe's bartender, and the Hollywood Reporter ended the review of it saying, uh, the emotional honesty of the cast is exemplified by Harry Northup's acting. And people would come up to me and they would say, well, did you get anything out of that? Did you get anything? I said, I don't have to get anything out of anything I do. As long as you fulfill your job, you know, acting, poetry, whatever, right there in the present, if, it, if it's really meant to be, something will come, but you just try to do the best you can right there. I don't do something to get something. Acting's a mystery. I mean, People say you go into the character, and, and then, uh, you know, uh, uh, Robert De Niro is always Robert De Niro to me. Even though he's a, he did a marvelous thing with the, with, with the character, but to me it was always Robert De Niro. What is the difference between the personality and, and the acting? Well, because the English, you know, more external, the Americans more internal, and you are, he is a character, and you use certain aspects of your life 
and it's like you think privately in public. That's what Lee Strasberg and the method acting is all about. Living your life, thinking privately in public. Don't go along with a herd. Express your feelings. Yeah, right I, I had a big fight with Stella Adler on the Steve Allen show. I was just on it. Just came from New York. And she kept putting down American actors because they don't learn body movement and dueling and uh, perfect pronunciation. And she started knocking well, Holland Brando. I said, Brandon, what is what the way you want to see the acting or you want to hear diction or a, a ballet? But you, know? But you know, it's interesting, Brando in his book, Songs My Mother Tell Me, he gives a lot of credit to Stella Adler. And Bill Clerman, yeah, because he said here he was a, you know, naive young boy so from you the Midwest. So you had to bring that up right in the middle of our conversation to make my no. joke ineffective? But what I was saying is he gives those people a lot of credit Let's get to that point. Himself. Let's get to that point. We had to diminish my, 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 my English joke. There must have been a latent resentment of me occupying that, uh, no. that moment of time. No. But so uh, listen, the, 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 do you so think it's time to uh, not go for a little dialogue? And, yeah, let, let's and, wrap this up. Has the weather changed since we talked to you last? Yes, it has. It's yeah. gotten decidedly warmer. And what, is, what does it look like for tomorrow? Uh, it's going to be decidedly warmer again. Yes, yes so indeed. maybe we can go surfing. Yeah. Are you doing a derailleur? I can't surf. surf? You know they what? don't look good. May I tell you something sad? Right. My son, he started surfing and I was away on location. And he started surfing when he was four years old, and my wife at the time sent me a photograph of him surfing in Malibu, and I felt terrible because I saw my son do something in a photograph before I saw him do it in real life. I would have liked to have seen him surf in real life as opposed to a photo. And that made me kind of sad. So, so you mean the picture, you, you would rather see the live incident rather than the picture? Yeah, but when, when, once you get old and he gets flabby, you don't want to look at him then. <laughs> you got a picture of him once when he looked like something. I mean, look at you. You, you still, you, you still have, have the remnant, remnants of a, uh, of a bullpen picture coming in with the bases loaded in the 19th. Can I tell you, you a Satchel Page anecdote? But, but you're, you're, you're losing the angling, <laughs> angle of the thinness. Well, let, let's wrap up our first program because okay, we're well, listen, over is, 20 minutes now. This, this is Don Sherman, and I'll, I'll, I'll check more out in the time. See if we can find some more interesting topics to go about. All right. And uh, Harry, you said about your writing. You never stop writing. And what inspires you? And why you have to park the car? <laughs> what? Spots to. He writes his hidden spots out. Yeah, there's a mystery to your writing, is what I'm saying. The mystery? Well, it has to be a mystery. I started writing in 1966. I was 26. Don't go through a speech. Don't do it for now. This is the end of the show. Yeah, this is the end of the show. we got to say goodbye. Goodbye. That's it. Ciao. <laughs>